So what are some reasons to watch this course? Well, I like to think of IT professionals of varying degrees of knowing just enough to be dangerous on a data network or an IT system as a whole. And the reason I say this is that in an IT system, there are so many moving parts, and each one of those moving parts has a tremendous amount of detail behind it that make it work. So this ranges from the application that a programmer is writing and all the nitpicky details he or she needs to know to write that program to the person running the server and all the nitpicky details that Windows or Linux or uh, other operating systems, VMware, uh, for instance, require all those very precise details to keep those systems running. And data networking is one of those areas as well that has some very precise and nitpicky details that it uses in order to make the whole system work. So as an IT professional, we're always in some state of not knowing what the other guy is doing in our IT data network. So what I want to do in this course is give you some opportunity to dispel some of your fears and make you much stronger at using some utilities like Wireshark to troubleshoot access control lists. So let's take a look at what we're going to cover. So the first topic is the OSI model. Now a lot of you are going to cringe when you hear me say that I'm going to talk about the OSI model because you know boring boring snore yeah my professor in college talked about it and it didn't make any sense uh, or I read about it in a book and it didn't make any sense and oftentimes when we learn about it it's taken so out of context we have no idea how to apply it in the real world so what I want to do is just strip out all of the garbage from the OSI model academic side and only focus on exactly what we need because that's going to be important when we use Wireshark because Wireshark is this amazing network protocol analyzer and it's so amazing because it's also free. So you have a free application that's probably one of the best in the world at capturing network traffic and giving the administrator an opportunity to analyze what's happening on a network interface card of a device. So Wireshark is this packet capture utility and it grabs traffic off of your network interface, allows an administrator to view it and Wireshark is set up to organize all of those frames and packets and segments exactly as we organize the OSI model. So actually Wireshark used the OSI model to set up its analysis of each frame, packet, and segment. We're then going to use Wireshark to capture TCP and UDP sessions and really understand how they operate. And then we're going to move into access control lists. And many of you may have written an access control list before. However, you may find this very helpful because I go through a process to make sure that you have all of the right information recorded in your access control list to allow the correct traffic through. And I find that this is really important to have good setup and good understanding of what traffic you want to allow through your ACL or allow through your router or firewall. It's really good to have an understanding of what that traffic is and map it out before you actually write the access control list. And then last, what I do is there are oftentimes many problems setting up an ACL to filter traffic into something like a DMZ. So I go through some examples where we attempt to create an access list and then use Wireshark to troubleshoot some problems that we may see with UDP access list and TCP access lists. I also cover a big topic, and that is DNS traffic in and out of a DMZ. Oftentimes, as network administrators, we forget about that darn DNS. And when we write our access control list, if we're not allowing our DNS traffic through, we end up breaking an entire system that ends up to be a very critical one in making our network operate. The big idea here is to give you some tools that you can walk away with that you can use in your data network to troubleshoot. Now, overall, Wireshark itself is such an enormous topic. Uh, we can cover that in 70, 80, 90 hours of videos uh, talking just about Wireshark. Here, I'm going to give you just the bare bones basics to get you up and running, get you filtering traffic, and get you analyzing traffic so you can see what's happening on your network. There are tons of other utilities you can use to add on to Wireshark that will help you analyze traffic more effectively. So, if anything, this is hopefully a springboard for you to get excited about using Wireshark in your network troubleshooting and go learn more about how to use it later on.